right, here we go. We've got the recording going. So welcome, I'm Dr. Nicole Kulas reed I'm a professor in the faculties of kinesiology and the Department of Oncology of Cummings School of Medicine at the University of Calgary. I'm the director of the Health and Wellness Lab and the Thrive Center, which are both in our Faculty of Kinesiology at the University of Calgary. I've been conducting exercise oncology research for 20 plus years and really a focus on health behavior change within an implementation setting. So really interested in how do we move the best evidence to best practice. And a huge part of that is developing this network of qualified exercise professionals. So I'm really excited to share with you the resources, our guest speakers, um, the professionals who are gonna share their time with us this week to really um, address some unique areas within exercise oncology training for qualified exercise professionals. So really excited to start off this week with Dr. Loren Capozzi, who will be up after me speaking about the tailoring needs and how do we move to really address medical related issues and concerns. You can see across the week, we've got a fantastic lineup. Really excited for tomorrow night, we have a participant advisory board. And I do think we often give lip service to the role of our participants, individuals living with and beyond cancer. Uh, and we really need to tap into their experiences um, and their needs, their concerns, if we're gonna develop, develop and deliver sustainable programming. We've got some excellent topics coming up on Wednesday as well, um, and you can see throughout the rest of the week. So really excited to have you here. Hopefully you'll be able to take in a few of these. Um, and just as a reminder, we are going to be recording all of our sessions. So if you can't make something next week, we should hopefully have these up on our YouTube channel on our Health and Wellness Lab website. So I just wanna start us off this evening and really set the stage. Um, we've seen an enormous amount of changes, really many of them put onto us by the impact of the pandemic over the past year and a half, two years. And in exercise oncology, this has looked like a couple of different things, but really the biggest one for most of us has been moving to a largely in-person setting or from this in-person setting where we could work with individuals, connect with them in person to really more of a virtual outreach. Um, but I think the key positive message from this enforced change is really that we've been able to consider how to reach even more individuals living with and beyond cancer. How do we build a network of more qualified exercise professionals outside of major urban settings where typically much of the exercise programming was delivered. You know, and so there's the negatives of not being able to gather, but there's that opportunity that we've had to really understand how we can not only deliver excellent programming, but how we can tap into um, the virtual delivery space to ensure that we can also conduct really good research and continue to build the evidence. Again, folks, if you don't mind, if just make sure your mute is on so that we don't have other background noise, that would be awesome. Thank you. And so that's a big change, right? That facilitating um, reach and understanding of how we can do this effectively, efficiently, and impact change. Ultimately, no matter whether we are delivering in person or we are engaging in virtual outreach, our goal within our programming is to bring back that sense of control to individuals ensuring that they can build wellness into their cancer journey in a way that um, works for their lifestyle, in a way that has them be able to develop the habit of regular physical activity or building up into more exercise. It's this issue of control um, and increasing an individual's ability to address wellness in a journey that is often earmarked by not having a lot of control, not being able to make all of the choices, that I think ultimately helps us positively impact quality of life. The other change I think we're seeing coming is really moving away from simply um, using a standard of care or exercise guidelines and recommendation. So while I absolutely think that what we have is an excellent example of pulling together the best evidence to inform our knowledge, exercise guidelines and recommendations alone do not change behavior. So we need to build upon these guidelines, using these as the basis for our exercise prescription, but really move forward 
And I'm suggesting in our work that we actually have to change our model of cancer care delivery via a pathway where we integrate exercise into standard cancer care. So we take that evidence, the guidelines, the knowledge of what is ultimately gonna enhance health and wellness, and we build that into the system by the inclusion, as you can see here in our pathways model, of a qualified exercise professional within standard cancer care. That opportunity to embed our professionals into the cancer care system means that our healthcare providers ultimately have the resource that they need right there. So we make their life easier. We enhance the opportunities for individuals living with and beyond cancer to access wellness. And importantly, using that qualified exercise professional, we can ensure that we are delivering safe and effective exercise programming based on their screening, based on their risks and how we need to modify. And that's the other piece of changing this model of cancer care, moving beyond simply exercise um, guidelines and recommendations, is the tailoring needs how we must absolutely start to address not just generic guidelines and generic prescription, but be able to address the specific and unique needs of each individual living with and beyond cancer. So within our model that we've delivered around exercise oncology implementation, there's really three key features that you see here. First is um, really the embedding in our clinic to community model. So at the clinic, we have this need to build systematic screening and referral into cancer care, which allows us to triage individuals to the appropriate programs and resources. And this may start with education and not necessarily an exercise program, depending where they are in their cancer journey and what's accessible to them. Ultimately, for individuals living with and beyond cancer, we are highly supportive of this moving them into their community-based setting really providing the resources, the programs and the opportunities to deliver and implement evidence-based exercise oncology programs where they live in their own community. And largely as we've seen over the last almost two years, virtually reaching more individuals who wouldn't normally have had, had access to programs. And we know that virtual implementation allows us to address many of the typical barriers that are stopping people from engaging in a program. Finally, how we all do this is with you, our qualified exercise professionals. By providing training, cancer specific training to community-based exercise specialists, we increase our capacity to be able to deliver on this. We increase our ability to sustainably deliver wellness in the community. Developing this um, and providing this training increases the network of qualified exercise professionals. So whether they're delivering one of our programs per se, or whether they're simply in a community-based setting, and when an individual who is living with and beyond cancer walks into that facility, they're able to better serve them. In addition, our professional training really reaches out to our healthcare providers, ensuring that within the system, they are aware, have access to the resources and can refer on so that they can, they can be the start of that wellness journey right when an individual is in the cancer care system. The training that we provide, so it's weeks like this, but we also have built a full online exercise oncology training program through Thrive Health. You can see the website link here. Um, and if you're not familiar with Thrive Health's training, I encourage you to check this out. We're actually in the process of updating. So we will have a brand new training module um, as well as a number of sub-modules to deal with specific issues across exercise oncology. And this is going to be released um, early January, 2022. So we're just transitioning over to the brand new content and updates. I'm gonna be really excite excited to share this across our qualified exercise professional networks. So regardless, if we continue to deliver virtually with fantastic instructors who are building capacity, or whether we get back to in-person programming, which I know all of us at a certain level want to get to, and when it's safe, we will of course be doing that. But either way, virtual or in-person, I think we have to consider key issues and things that have really been bar being barriers to engagement. And that's flexibility in our programming and how do we translate that best evidence to best practice. We absolutely have to focus on building community. 
I'll say this, I've said it before and I'll say it again. This exercise is about so much more than an exercise prescription. It's about building a network and a community of wellness and developing social connections between our participants that can really help them thrive during their cancer journey. And then finally, it's about moving beyond a generic prescription to targeting specifically underserved populations and providing a tailored approach. And so this may mean everything from how do we engage more individuals outside of those who usually come into programs, which is white, breast cancer, upper middle class. So how do we address cultural barriers and ethnic barriers? How do we do address our LGBTQA plus populations? Right? How do we address clinically underserved where maybe there's been a bit of hesitancy to building exercise into standard care? For example, our neuro-oncology program or head and neck cancer surgical patients. Those are two examples of programs that we're actually doing this work right now. And hopefully over the next year or two, we'll be able to share some of that impact. So there's still a lot to be done. Um, and two of the programs, just for those that are joining us from Alberta in particular that you might be aware of, or now across Canada, are our ACE and Excel programs, which build on this clinic to community model, our evidence-based research studies, really looking at how do we develop and implement a sustainable exercise program. ACE has been going on in Alberta for five years, and we have a large database, over 2,300 from our in-person programs and hundreds now that have been doing our virtual programs. We're working with AHS and Cancer Care to implement this as part of standard care here in Alberta. Based on the success of ACE, we've really moved forward into Excel, and that is implementing the same program um, and taking it across the country with specific outreach to reach rural and remote individuals who typically have not had access to exercise oncology programs. So we're excited for the work that we're doing and really taking this best evidence approach and moving it into practice, assessing how do we implement sustainably um, and how do we develop our networks of trained professionals, healthcare providers and our qualified exercise professionals to ensure that we can deliver this across communities. I think there's a lot I could tell you about what we're collecting and what we're doing, but the best way to really share this, I think, is through showing you what participants have had to say. So I hope you can hear this, and I don't know if there's a trick. Max, let me know as I start this to go if everyone can hear this. I'm going to press play. Let's see if it works. Can you hear this? Hello, I'm David Folks jones my name is Linda. My name is Ona Lesmanes. My name is Dale Weisbrook. My name is Margo McPhail. I live in Canmore, Alberta. I'm from Stetler, Alberta. I'm from Ottawa. I'm here in Regina, Camrose, Alberta. I started the Excel program about three weeks ago, I think, three, four weeks ago. I joined the program because I felt a need to increase my physical activity. As a cancer survivor, I was in a bit of a funk. I lacked motivation to keep fit. I needed a structure to restart and to improve my physical and emotional well-being. I think the main thing that I was told in the very beginning is even though you don't want to, get off the couch, get off the bed, get off the chair, get up and do something. When I saw the program and it, it's geared towards uh, cancer patients and helping them in the journey to getting back to fitness, uh, I was overwhelmed. Like, I was super happy. Physically, every day you feel better. And I think any day that you feel like you have the, your body's your own again, it's not cancers anymore, it belongs to me, it is hugely important. I do have more energy. I feel that um, I have more strength and more flexibility in my body. But it gives you an opportunity to kind of take back a little bit of that control. I can feel my energy levels going up. The Excel program has exceeded my expectations. It was just something to look forward to. You knew that every Tuesday and Thursday at 1030, yay, you know, you're going to be with human beings again. When I saw the Excel program. You have no idea how happy I was because I'm like, yes, finally, <laughs> my people. People that are going through the same thing as um, I have gone through we supported each other with questions. If somebody had whatever, there was a support going on. And the facilitators were so wonderful for letting that happen. 
I can't say enough about the instructors. The instructors are compassionate. They uh, provide all kinds of modifications to suit each person's needs. It was like, <gasps> someone who gets us. They kind of engage you and, and, and you feel immediately like you want to continue with this program. I just highly, highly, highly recommend the program. It has been phenomenal. It's been life-changing for me. I would highly recommend it to anyone. So hopefully you can see from that short clip just about the impact. And ultimately that's what this is really about. We wanna build this network of qualified exercise professionals so that impact can grow. So we can reach more individuals and ensure that every individual diagnosed with cancer, living with and beyond cancer, has the opportunity to learn about wellness and to implement it, whatever that might look like for them throughout their cancer journey. I've got some contact information up on the screen here. Um, you can follow us on social media. You can email us if you have any questions throughout the week, if anything comes up for you, or you wanna learn more about our resources. Um, you can also find us um, at our website at the University of Calgary, which is um, thriveforcancersurvivors.com.